Giving that man money, he should be ashamed. Why? Oh, come on, Fade. He was begging the poor lad, have a bit of sympathy. Begging my foot? You saw the sign, homeless vet, please help. Right, what's wrong with that? Well, he's a vet, he's qualified, there's plenty of jobs for vets. Should be helping out on a farm with the animals. No, he's, he's not that kind of vet, Vera. Listen, I know all about vets. I've watched Animal Hospital. They're nice and clean. They're not begging on the streets. Rolf Harris would never stand for that. No, no, he, he's, he's a veteran, a vet. A vet. A soldier, not a vet. Well, he should have said then. I mean, that's fraud, is that? Pretending he works with cats and dogs. Oh, will you he, will he stop it a minute? Of all the places to have a flaming row. Yeah, you're right. Come here, give us a kiss. Oh, get off! <laughs> It's no smoking, the whole country's no smoking. Oh, they'll never find out, V. Well, they will when they support plumbing apart to get your fag ends out the sink. Hi, Vera, is that for Area? Oh, Hello. And don't ask for bitter, because they don't know what bitter is. Hey. Fiona, <laughs> you don't know who it is? Ah, no, 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 it's not just me. Look, it's both of us. Come on. Hey, would you have thought yet? Oh, I have now. What the flipping heck are you doing here? Come on, it's Sherry Blair can get her hairdresser flown out, and so can you. Ooh, you're a sight for sore eyes. <laughs> well, it turns out that Alec had more than one dodgy deal up his sleeve, so he passed it on to me, but it's all a bit or short. He owed me some money from the club, so I just took it. What do you mean, dodgy deal? Oh, there's no dodgy about Alec Gilroy, is the Fiona? No. No, it's me that's feeling dodgy. Yeah, yeah my stomach, aeroplane food, you know? Tommy. Yeah. Oh, I loved it. I had beef from woman next to me. Hey. Right, well, I didn't come here to stand in a hotel for you. Down by the pool, bikinis on, drinking and down work up eight hours. Hey, that's a good idea, though. I mean, we, we can go out some other time, can't we? We can't leave these two little lassies on their own, can we? Hey, hands off you. I have something to show you, and I've told you it's important. If it gives you any bother, it brings security. I've had them twice already. Right, we'll see you later then, by the pool. Well, yeah, cos, like, come on. What's he meeting them period? It's funny, isn't it, right? How you bump into people from home and it's like your best friends. That's the first time I've ever been kissed by Jack Dunkley. Yeah, except in his dreams. Yeah, and that's the way it's gonna stay. You never catch me with an old man. Because, right, pull sunshine, drinking and and work up a town. Nothing's stopping me. Oh, Jack, isn't it lovely, eh? So romantic. Hey, and you know what year this is, don't you? I do that. We've been in the Rovers two years and they're putting the flaming mortgage payments up. No, you and me. 40 years. It's our ruby wedding this year. 40 years? We don't get that for murder. Have I got a surprise for you? Look, I've brought them all. Wedding certificate. Passports. So if you show on these at Town Hall, they'll give us a license. And guess what? We can have our marriage blessed all over again in Las Vegas. You mean they're going to read that lot down the Town Hall? Well, I suppose so, yeah. Birth certificates, everything. Look, I've even brought... Look at that. Certificate for your pigeons to prove they're not diseased. Hey, you, you've not read that lot, have you? Well, why would I bother? If I want to read, though, I want something with an happy ending. 
Well, you're right. I mean, why should we bother as happy as we are? I mean, I look at you, Vera Love, and I see all them 40 years. Every single one of them. Look, we're doing it. Get there and get the licence and then get the wedding chapel booked. Now then, what am I having? Vera. Oh, they always have mayonnaise on everything. Vera. Do you need repeats on me? I think I'll have the salad cream. You Vera. can taste the vinegar. Vera, love, there's something I'd better tell you. What? Just remember, it was all your fault, all your doing. Don't blame me. Well, if this is jet lag, I like it. I just think, like, some people spend their entire lives like this, like Stephanie Powers from Heart to Heart, <laughs> eh? Las Vegas one day, private jet to New York. All we have to do now is find ourselves a millionaire. I've drawn up this list, right? Tonight we hit the nightclubs, the night after we go around every single roulette wheel in town. That's not going to be cheap, is it? And then the night after that, we go around every single cocktail lounge in town. And then if that doesn't work, we try the hospitals. Hospitals? What for? Doctors. We're dead rich. I pretend I've strained the ankle or something. Hmm, Max. It sounds like a bit too much hassle to me. I mean, you get all sorts of people in places like it's like, like gangsters and that. I think I'm just going to stay by the pool. Look at you, giving up before you've even started. Max, the likes of me and you do not go bumping into millionaires. Honestly, Fee, you don't often sound middle-aged. Oh, thanks. Well, you do, though, don't you? I mean, it wasn't long ago we were going down to Hacienda coming back at all hours. Yeah, well, you've seen the clubs nowadays, haven't you? They're full of 14-year-olds. Face it, we're past it. No, Fee, you act like you're past it. Do I? Yeah, you do a bit. I mean, look at your boyfriends. Every boyfriend you have, that's it. Big romance, moving in together. Look at you and Alan, you're doing it again. Just can't wait to settle down with your pipe and slippers. Just because I like to be settled, it don't make me boring. I mean, look at Jack and Vera. I mean, they've been married for years. They might be as mad as mooses, but they still have fun. You're right. You are. I'm 21 years old, and I'm boring. Right, let's go. Where to? Anywhere. Everywhere. Old ladies sit by the pool all day. I've got a credit card and I'm going to use it. Come on. Well, that worked. Do you remember when we first met? Fun fair, Potter's Field. Yeah, my 18th birthday. And with Enid Crump and Vera Braden. <laughs> they used to call us Vera 1 and Vera 2. Max, she were Vera 1 because she'd passed her exams. Oh, I, I, was, I was chatting you. You got stuck on the Big Dipper. She's dead now, you know, Vera Braden. I suppose that makes me Vera 1. <laughs> anyway. I mean, it was all your fault, you know. I mean, three girls out on a night out on the side her. I mean, that didn't stand a chance, did I? You need crumb. She's dead and all. She choked on a lamb chop, you know. Silver Jubilee Day, bless her. Did, did, did you see, did, did, it all came out. I didn't plan it an hour, you see, V. Yeah, it was only me left. That's tragic, that. I didn't get so upset, me. Vera, Vera, will you, will you just listen for a minute? See, the, the, the point is, when you're a young lad, you, you say out to impress, don't you? I mean, you had to be older. I mean, that's the way it was, wasn't it? The young girls liked their fellas to be that bit older, so I said I was 22. I had a bit on. So you liked me, you know? I did on how much? Well, I was 20, but 22 sounded that bit better. I mean, it was all your fault, you know, three of you laughing away there, so I had to sound like the man of the world, didn't I? Hold on, you mean you've been lying all this time? Well, I always meant to tell you, I thought, one day she's going to pause for a breath, I'll tell her then, but it hasn't happened yet, has it? But we had a party when you were 50. I was 48. But I bought you that clock, you flaming liar, I'll have that back. But the point is, Vera, there has only been one time I've had to give my age, officially, in front of you. And I had to lie then, didn't I? Our wedding day. You lied on the day we got wed! Well, I had to, standing there in the register office, then reading me birth certificate with a big smudge on the date. You mean, there's a lie on this? On our marriage license? So, you see, you go and show me the town hall that you look at my passport with the proper date and you'll find out. But that means it's wrong! Our marriage license is wrong! Jack, don't you know what this means? It means we're not married. V, just calm down. It means no such thing. It does. We're not wed. We're living in sin. 
40 years living in sin with a big fat lummox like you. I, I mean, I'm still Vera Burton. Vera Duckworth doesn't exist. Jack, what does that make out, Terry? I suppose it just makes it official. Well, that's it. Down to the town hall, quick. And not for a blessing. We're going to get married for the first time before anybody finds out you've made me a scarlet woman. You've know, always done all right for 40 years. Who's to know? I will. Me. And you can do it properly in all this time. A, a proper proposal. Come on, get down on one knee. No, I'm not doing that. Oh, yes, you are. Listen, don't forget the Rovers. My name's above that door. Vera, look. If look, do know. it properly now on one knee. I am doing. Well, come on. Veronica Burton, will you do me the honour of accepting my hand in marriage? I should throttle you. Fear of Miss Swamp Duck, marry me. I don't suppose I've got any choice. Was that a yes? Yes! Yes! <laughs> Here, 40 years it's took him. Oh, come here. Yeah. <laughs> You see, Maxie, that's how it's done. <laughs> right this way, baby. Woo! <laughs> so what's the car called again? This big, oh, beautiful red Cadillac, right? Oh, well, look at that one. That's gorgeous. Um, have you got your stuff on? Yeah, you've got my Nineteen seventy-five model, sleek lines and a fine chassis. You know the uh, car ain't bad either. Give us a break, all right? Bog on. Oh, oh, English accents. William Shakespeare, uh, Charles Dickens, Barbara Taylor Bradford. Ladies, fine wine, canapes, and a little poolside entertainment, courtesy of Stefano Delaney. Please be my guests. I'm sorry. Is there a language barrier here in England? Bog off tends to mean bog off. That's a shame. Creep. What? Oh, it's okay. It was just one of those time for your afternoon nap. You be middle aged and all that. Don't be late. Starts today. Hey, there's hope for you yet. Alright, alright! Yeah, but I've got no maid of honour. I mean, who can I ask? It's a pity Ivy's dead. She'd have loved it. But we could have had a club floor now. Oh, now come on, Vera. Let's not break the bank. Oh, hello, you two! Oh, we just had to say thank you. It's all because of you. Maxwell, say hello to the nice people. Uh, hello. I've been trying to persuade him, leaving little hints all over the place. You know, like little horseshoes in the fridge and confetti on the pillow and big white stretched lemos instead of a cab, you know, that sort of thing. I'm exhausted, but I'm desperate. I was desperate. And then we saw you two, and then he was inspired. You were inspired. 
Weren't you, Maxie? Well, I was inspired. We saw you propose, and then Maxie did the same, and we're getting married. And it's all thanks to you. Oh. Maxwell, lad, have, have, have you thought about this? No, not really. I... Should I? Who'd have believed it? It starts out as a business trip, and here I am, marrying a millionaire. Beg your pardon? Well, he's a millionaire. Isn't that right, Maxie? Well, yes, yes, <laughs> technically I, I am. <laughs> Never. How do you make your money? Women's underwear. Don't oh. tell me there's any money in women's underwear because I never found any. Well, it's not for want of luck, Kenny. He's Maxwell Baxter from Baxter's Bras and Bodies. Mm, yes, I invented the soft seam balconette with uh, side buttresses in scalloped lace and optional trichotronic jacket. <laughs> that were you? Yes, that was me. Do you know you've saved me from a life of pain? I'm nothing without my balconette. 38D. You're right, Jack is right. <laughs> I thought so. And now remember, you know, the American sizes are quite a bit larger than the European standard. So you may find the Maxwell's 38D uh, a little on the, uh, well, how should we put it, uh, roomy? Max, just back off, eh? Hey, just save this for the office. I'm sorry. <laughs> you know, it's my life. <laughs> it's uh, nothing personal. Hey, but baby, a millionaire, aren't you lucky? Oh, now don't tell me you're as poor as church mice. A wedding in a Las Vegas. <laughs> well, we've met a Bob or two, haven't we, Jack? I think that's the precise figure, Vera, yes. What do you do? Well, we're semi-retired now. Oh, yeah, we'll let the staff deal with things, you know. We've got this, like, um, tavern. Do food. It's more like a bistro, you know. Like fish and chips, that kind of stuff? No, 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 a cuts of both. What's on the menu? What's on the menu, Jack? I don't know, V. It's been, it's been a while since I've wandered down to have a word with the kitchen stuff. It's more like your um, French cuisine. We've got a very famous dish. Really? What's that? The hopo. What's a hopo? Oh, we do a lovely hopo. Oh, yes, people come from miles around, you know, to taste our hopo. Mm -hmm. As presented by our celebrity chef, Miss Elizabeth Turpin Williams. She was very big in the war. She's very big now. <laughs> oh, well, you know, you guys, you have just got the most fabulous partnership. Yeah. Honey, go ahead, Max. Will you tell them how you and I met? It was a contact ad. You know, Mother said when she was dying the day she, she said, Maxwell, well, she actually talked like that because her throat was gone. Maxwell, there'll be nobody there to plump up your pillows. You're going to need a woman. I'll Maxwell! A Sorry, I'm, I'm not allowed to talk about Mother. You know, so I just put an advert in the paper, you know, the usual stuff. Lonely millionaire seeks in anybody. Non-smoker preferred. <laughs> He must have had thousands of replies. No, only one. It was destiny. What job do you do then, uh, Bidet? Postal delivery. <laughs> now, whatever you do, don't say we're hairdressers from Weatherfield. One, because we are. Max, the most in hand. Yes, so much the better. You don't think there might be a well, if they are, they won't by the time I finish with them. Well, if it isn't Thelma and Louise. Well, if it isn't Stefano Delaney. Now tell me, 
What brings you two lovely ladies to the middle of the desert? Um, strictly business. No, don't. Now, let me guess. It wouldn't be the entertainment business, would it? Well, we have been known to entertain. Yeah, I'll bet. Little lady, I want you to meet a friend of mine, Joe Polzinski. Max? Hi. Hi. You cheese. There's a million foods in the world. You need just one flavor for the dressing. Who chose blue cheese? It's revolting. I'm telling you, the world's a crazy place. Yeah. the day you met me. Now, which do you think? Ben. Are you sure? Positive. Well, I'll have these because you're always about to judge. Grab it. Lucky Becker. If you want to drag me away, all that would have been mine. Don't be so soft. It's only luck. I mean, that's what this place is all about. Luck. <laughs> Could you hold that for a minute, please? What is it with my face? Whatever happened to the good old-fashioned sit-down meal? Any classes in etiquette to get through these things? Maybe if you didn't eat so much. I got a very high metabolism. I don't eat, I get all faint. See? I'm woozy now. Like, you tried that. They got herbs in the breadcrumbs. I mean, why bother? What for? Am I supposed to be impressed? Go on, try some. I've already got some, thanks. Oh, well, uh, tell me. Where are you from? What are you doing here? Oh, we're just tourists. Oh, yeah? Yeah, we're getting invited in the street. Hey, honey, take a look around. You see many people? This is Stefano's party. You gotta try these chicken wings. Stefano's party, you need something special to get in. No, me and my friend. Just tourists on holiday, you know. Nothing special about us. Hairdressers from merry old England, <laughs> like sure. There we are. Honey, there's only one kind of girl that gets invited to Stefano's soirees, and I trust you're getting very well paid. What does that mean? Oh, come on. No! What exactly does that mean? Well, first we help ourselves to the buffet, and then... everyone just stay where you are don't move how did he push you in the pool you're all coming with us down to the station 
Yeah, tell them. Look, I really don't know what's going on here, right? But it's absolutely nothing to do with us. We're just tourists, all right? You can put all that in your statement. But it's true. Look, just tell them, all right? Just tell them what I've just told you. That we're just two tourists on Olive. That's it. Tell them. I'm sorry. I didn't hear a thing. Must have water in my ears. Now, how did that happen? You're coming with us. Hey, Tom, bring the buffet. Call it evidence. You've got to try those chicken wings. Yeah, and I'm going to put a pillow down, middle at bed, because we're not married. So none of your hanky panky till we get wed. There's no danger of that. Oh. Yeah, I wonder if we've got any messages. How do you want this thing? It said push this, in it? No. Oh, it'd have been nice to get a message in Las Vegas, wouldn't it? Oh, sit down. You're making room look untidy. A million dollars for you. What about it? I could have won a million dollars. We could have had it. Well, we didn't, so there. Do you know, I can't stand the tea in this country. Let's have a proper cup, eh? It's really nice. What have we got instead, eh? Now, but years and years of hard graft, and we'll be lucky if we retire with chumps, ain't it? That was my big chance. I was there and I missed it. If you want to be blathering on, Oh, so it's all my fault now, is it? Yes, it is. You and your yak, yak, yakking and your flaming earrings. We could have been set up for life there, all that money, and it's gone, gone because of you. Do you think I like living like this every day? Hey, worrying. Bills, debts, VAT. Worrying me heart out every day. Well, we are stuck with this till the day we die. And it's all your fault. I'm sorry, V. It, it must be the heat and I'm watching that fella and... We're not married. You're not me, husband. Come on, what's done is done, love. You're not me, husband. You, you, we're not married. And I'm glad, and you know why? Because you're a mean, nasty man, Jack Duckworth. Come on, Vera. I said I'm sorry. You know why nobody comes? Why our Terry never comes home? Why we've no grandchildren? Even though I tried to hang on to them, and did she slip through my fingers? And it's all your fault. Because you're mean and selfish and horrible. You only think about yourself, your, your, your pint and your pigeons. And the rest of us, we just get in the way. Forty years of loneliness, that's what I've had. Oh, come on, Fee, love. Don't you fear to me. And you can get out, you. This is my room. I'm a single woman, I am. Come on, get out. Out! Out! Go on. Get out of my room! You must be able to find the equivalent of Dulce Froggart somewhere in Las Vegas. Go spend night with her. Will you, will you just listen to me, B? I've, I've said I'm sorry. Come one step near me and I'll phone the police. Look, I have told you it was nothing to do with us. We're just tourists. Sorry, girls, but there were a lot of people at that party pretending to be something that they're not, myself included. We just need time to check your passports, time of arrival in the country, that sort of thing. Well, how, how long is that going to take? Mm, a lot of places close down this time of night. Could take till morning. You're joking! Do I look like I'm joking? Mm, gherkin. Now, who thought of that? Sleep well, girls. See you later. Could be like prison cell block age. Could get into a fight, find out who's top dog. Maxine, shut up!
Maxwell, lad, thank God for a friendly face. Barman, lies whiskey. She left me! Make that two. Thanks. They're both for me. Barbin, on the rocks, right now! Hey, what did I walk into the city morgue by mistake? I said now! I left him. What for? Oh, engaged for two minutes, and he saw questions, questions, questions about my past life and all that hoo-ha. Oh, I mean, like I never lived before I met him, right? <laughs> so what if I've been married before? Oh, and then he saw nag, 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 nag. I mean, what's the big deal about five? Five what? Husbands. It's not as if they're still alive. And if they all died in questionable circumstances, what's that got to do with me? <laughs> Cheers. Cheers. I wash more in the morning. I wouldn't worry, they'll probably come in at dawn and shave your head. Still, it's a good story, isn't it? What is this? I mean, most people come back off holiday and boy to tears with their snapshots. We've got mug shots. I'm glad that you find that so funny. Oh. It's not as if you're going to send us to Alcatraz, is it? Max, you don't know what they might do. They could deport us, for starters. All that money down the drain. They won't. They might. Just stop and think for one minute. God, it's no wonder you've got no jet lag. You haven't got the imagination, have you? Oh, thanks very much. Well, it was your fault that we went to the party, because you dared me to. Trust me to listen to someone who failed every single GCSE on offer. I get it. So I'm thick, is that it? Well, you don't think I gave you the job because you're clever, do you? I gave it to you out of sympathy. Nothing but sympathy, because no one else would have you. And even then I've got to give you the kids and pensioners because you're useless. You could go on courses, you could train, but do you? No, because you can't be bothered. Well, so that makes you the clever one, does it? I've got my own business, haven't I? <laughs> and how'd you get that then, Fiona? Hard work? Yeah. No. You were given it dirt cheap by a dodgy woman with a dodgy past to run off with a sister's dodgy husband. Yeah. And then landed it in your lap. And I made it work. And how did you do that then, Fiona? Ah, oh, let's see. Hmm. Same old story. You were given it. I had to stand there on your 21st birthday when your brother handed over the entire shop and let you off the loan and everything. Your whiz kid brother. You spoil all your life and you pretend it's hard work. Same at school, you're a little snob. Well, you see this little snob? She's giving you the sack. Well, you can't, because I resigned. Yeah, well, I sacked you first. Did not! Dig two! Did not. Did two. You see, me and our Jack, we've had his rows, you know, plenty of them. But this time, I don't know. Do you think he'll come back? Vera, honey. Listen to the voice of experience. Losing a husband is not a tragedy. It's a skill. Now, come on. We are going to move and groove and have some fun in this town. Come on, up off your feet. Come on, let's get out of here. Oh, thank you. Thanks. There you go. Hey, British accent. He's one of yours, Vera. Hey, is it all? Thanks, Ray, isn't it? Ray Langton, Deirdre's husband. Oh my God. Mrs. Duckworth? I don't believe it. I mean, what's it like, this city? It's just like one big reunion. <laughs> Come here. Oh. Oh. Hey, you changed, haven't you? You haven't. Well, I'm not sitting moping. Vera could stuff it. This is the entertainment capital of the world, and I am going to enjoy myself even if it kills me. Better than being stuck at home. It does get boring having money. Oh, aye. I mean, that's why we go on holiday, innit? To get away from it all. That takes me back. The Rovers returned on the end of Coronation Street. Well, it's called a street, but it's more of a crescent, an avenue, really. I mean, it's very upmarket, isn't that right? Uh, yeah. Well, I own it now, you know, the Rovers. Oh, right. Sure. Of course you do. Mind you, we'll look at it still standing. Because just after you left, 79, weren't it? 78. All right. 
Deirdre left Tracy outside the Rovers and earned the Pram. All hell breaks loose because this lorry drove straight through the windows, <gasps> buried Tracy under two ton of planks. Oh. They, well, it didn't really because she'd been kidnapped two seconds before. My gosh, Vera, honey, what kind of a place do you live in? Oh, that's only the start. You won't believe what's happened since you've been gone. You got that right. I mean, I enjoy myself, Maxwell. But now much happens in our neck of the woods. I mean, life at home is nice enough. <sighs> but by the heck, it's dull. She married a Moroccan. She's Mrs. Rashid now. Well, she was. Because he went to give Tracy a kidney, and he had no choice, because he's dead. Well, how did he die? Well, nobody knows. It's a mystery. Very ashamed. See, as, as a lad, you think your life is, is going to be exciting, don't you? You know, fun and adventure. What do you get? Boredom. Here, an Emily Bishop. Do you remember her? Of course I do. Tracy's godmother. Oh, well. You think Ernie being shot would be enough, but no, she goes and marries Arnold Swain, who turns out to be a bigamist. Then he tries to take her in a suicide pact with him, and, well, me and Ivy were very upset. Weatherfield. It's the same one day as it is the next. Nothing exciting ever happens. Alan Bradley tried to murder Rita Fairclough, but then he got killed by a Blackpool tram. <laughs> uh, Mrs. Duckworth, it's the end of my shift and uh, I've got to go. It's been nice talking. Right, uh, and I'll give you all of today, Trey. Um, best not. Bit awkward, you know. Why? What have you been up to? Well, I got married in Amsterdam to a bloke called Raymond. <coughs> We've adopted three Vietnamese boat people. So uh, now I'm on run from the evil twin. <laughs> it's like a soap opera. <laughs> yeah. See ya. <laughs> oh. See ya. You know, Vera, honey. I really did have my suspicions about you in this tavern, you know, but nobody, nobody that I know on this earth could make up anything like this. Ha! And you've had one heck of an exotic life. <laughs> yeah, well, what will I tell you about Pet Gilroy? Oh, yeah, come on. Um, no more for a sad old drunk. Best night of my life, that one. Best night of my life, too. It was the only night of my life. I, I don't get out much. Ever. I mean, it's always about work. I mean, if it's not about the latex underwire scoop, then there's trouble with the distinctive eyelid embroidery, you know? Sometimes it's just bras, bras, bras. You know what I mean? Oh, I do that. I, I... Uh, and there was mother. Ooh, well, she kept you going. Showing up at three or four in the morning with a cup of hot cocoa. Sometimes she she let the lock off the gate and let me run around the backyard for twenty minutes or so. And she'd pretend she was a coyote and chase me around the yard. Oh, she was a rascal. <laughs> Biting me on the ankle, those little nips. <sighs> May she rest in peace. The rocking chair is still out on the porch. And sometimes I sit in it just like she did. Rocking, rock, rock, rock. You know... I think sometimes that if I just put on one of her dresses, it'd be like having mother in the house. Say good night, Maxwell. Good night, Maxwell. I miss those little nips. Wallace. Lovely, lovely Wallace. Let's see, he was husband number three. See? I said to him, Wallace, honey, 
Do not drive that truck. The brakes are all worn through. <laughs> well, Winnie, listen. <laughs> oh, you said Wally would dead. <laughs> details, Vera, details. <sighs> Let me see now. Then it was, oh, Norm. Oh, lovely. Lovely, 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 Normie. Oh, we had the most fabulous honeymoon, the Grand Canyon. Oh, it was so beautiful. Then all of a sudden, there's a skateboard. Out of nowhere, it just appears, and whoop! Off he goes, over the edge. Now, I mean, you know, really, who could have predicted it? And then... <laughs> Alistair. <laughs> he was so funny. <laughs> I said to him one day, I said, Alistair, let's do something really cool. Let's take a video, you know, and send it into America's funniest home accident videos, you know. So I got the camcorder. He got the dynamite. Vera, it was going to be so funny. <laughs> <laughs> and then up he goes. Spread over three states. Oh, that's so awful. Oh, well, they bought the clip. But you know what, Vera? All those men who need them. I mean, you know, all those men. I don't really think they ever even satisfied me. You know what I mean? Huh? I mean men. What are men? They're just women with unnecessary bits they forgot to shave off. You know, like factory seconds. You and me, kid, we're the original moldings. Oh, yeah. <laughs> we're perfect. Yeah. <laughs> we are, babe. <laughs> so, uh, tell me, Vera, does your mind ever wonder? Do you ever fancy trying something, um, Suffolk? Well, I'll drink anything, me. <laughs> jelly donut. The man who first said jelly, donut, let's put them together. I love that man. Look, how much longer are you going to keep us locked in here, please? Oh, that, yeah. Well, uh, you're free to go. On behalf of the city of Las Vegas and the United States of America, may I apologize for any inconvenience I may have caused you, and I hope you enjoy the rest of your stay. Something I said? Oh, she you know, I've got a banging head. Mm. Can't remember a thing about last night. <clears throat> anyway, I better get my face on before Flash Harry comes crawling back. I tell you how, Jack. He always comes crawling back. Yeah, well, I'm gonna start looking all over again. It's not easy finding a millionaire. Now losing him, that's easy. Yeah, well, I tell you, I'll have a few words to say to him. Don't you worry. He's a changed man, him, since he got his inheritance. What inheritance? Well, his brother Cliff. He died a couple of years ago. Poor soul. Left him a fortune. Got a resource, everything. He thinks he's Lord of the Manor. Hello? Who's that? Biddy? Maybe. Biddy, love, do us a favour, put our beer on. Biddy? Vera says she never, ever, ever wants to see you again. Oh, aye, she, she always says that. Put her on. Meet me at the pool. I'll be down in a minute. No, oh, hang on, hang on. Biddy? Who was that? Nobody. Wrong number. Vera, I gotta go. And just remember, in the days ahead, as a fellow woman, I'm doing you a favor. We should have never given their independence. Oh. Just sign here, thanks. 
Now, if you consider any of your possessions to be missing, you have to fill out a complaints form. That's over there on the left. Blue or black ink, no pencil. Thank you. Now, we have one purse, two purses, one pocket road map, one hotel room key, one pastrami on rye. Oh, that's mine. Uh, one camcorder. Another present from your brother. It's on loan, that's all. Share it, you said. Take it in turn, you said. Don't even get looking at your old holiday. Fine, take it. Yeah, I will. Thank you, ladies. You're free to go. Oh, why waste time moping? It's not as if you're even married, you and Vera. It's just you and me. Oh, two lonely souls. We should feast. Those who have loved and lost, they should always feast. You go and order breakfast, then we can feast and gorge and dine. Oh, lick those lips, Jack. I think about wait for our Vera. Oh, don't be such a scaredy poo. I won't bite. <laughs> Not on the first date, anyway. Now go on, go on, you go on. I'll meet you in a minute. Well, I am feeling a bit peckish, yes. <gasps> Pancakes. <gasps> Lots of syrup dribbling down my chin. Oh, and whipped cream. I'll bring extra napkins. Now you go on. I've got a very important message to make. I say, huh? Now, I did envisage an evening with handcuffs in view, but uh, not quite like this. Allow me to extend some American hospitality to our foreign visitors. I know this little deli just off the strip. Coffee, bagels, donuts, whatever you like. Get lost. Leo! Max! What? Is that not clever going with him? Well, I'm not clever, am I? all this way, halfway across the world and it's hot and it's expensive, it's brilliant, it's fantastic. But it don't matter, does it? Because no matter where you go, people are always the same, they always let you down. But look around, Jack, he's vanished. I don't know, he's always wanted out of this marriage. Now this is one big chance. He'll be back. Yeah, but what if he is? Hmm. Oh, look at Pear <laughs> We should be having a good time. Oh, no. oh. oh no. Will you just leave me alone? I'm going to report, you know, this is police harassment. It's to say sorry. Big potato means sorry. Didn't nobody ever teach you that? Look, I tried to get you out last night, but it's procedure. There wasn't anything I could do. Look, I brought gravy. No, leave me alone. You are a pest. That's what you are. You're a pest. If you just listen. Yeah, I, I'm free. Don't tell me you're vegetarian. Uh, that would break my heart. I think maybe there's some alfalfa here somewhere. Look, right, whatever your name is. Dino. Dino de Catalano. Old Italian family. Pasta like you wouldn't believe. What exactly do you want? I figured I owed you and I thought a little dinner, you know? Oh. What, just you and me? Just you and me. I would rather die. I know you English girls. All that passion hiding beneath a veneer of contempt. That's what I call style. Why, right, would someone like me like you. Chicken? Oh. It's got spices, only 10% fat. <laughs> ah! Ah! Tastes great with chlorine. <laughs> what are you like? 
That's two dry cleaning bills you owe me. But we can settle for dinner. Are you ever going to give up? No. All right then, dinner once, and that's it, all right? She loves me! <laughs> hey, you picked her right in there. <laughs> story of my life, Vera, story of my life. God, this is fantastic. In the movies, Max. You know, a pretty face like yours should be in front of the camera, not behind it. Well, maybe I can help you out. I've made a movie or two in my time, you know? Really? Anything I've seen? Yeah, it could be. The last one we did was called The Beast with Two Backs. Oh, what's that then? Horror film? Yeah, a few people were horrified. We're going to shoot the sequel in the garage when it's free. Oh, Beast with Two Backs too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we've got to work a little bit on that title. <laughs> There could be a part in it for you. Stick with me, kid. Boss! Hey, Maxwell! Nice to see you. Glad you could make it. Maxwell, let me introduce my companion. Max, Max. Max, Max. Pleased to meet you. 34V. You are? I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. Oh my god, I'm sorry! That was Biddy's favorite cocktail! Everything reminds me of her. Uh, yeah, and glass of water for the man. Uh, listen, uh, sweetheart, a little bit of business. Ten minutes, don't go away. It's okay. Got nowhere else to go. What say you find yourself together here, Maxwell? There's millions of dollars riding on this deal. That's the same thing she always said. <laughs> I'm telling you. It could be the best life. You and me, the perfect pair. You slim and gorgeous, me not. Dino, I have told you, I have got a boyfriend. Oh yeah, Alan. Alan. What kind of a name is Alan? You'll be embarrassed to introduce him with a name like that. You won't go out there so you won't have to meet people. Mm -hmm. As a matter of fact, he's a policeman. There, you got a thing for policemen, I knew it. No, just one policeman. Which one? Alan. You see, you can't say his name without laughing. Besides, you don't have real cops. Not in Britain. Why is that? There's no crime. Hey, I've watched PBS. Nothing ever happens. I mean, what do you call a real crime? Morris dancing in a public place? Selling horse chestnuts without a permit? Officer, arrest that man. He just used a split infinitive. It is not like that. Out here, we get real crime. We invented it. You want to be a cop's wife? I'm your man, I'm telling you. Look at me. I got honesty written all over my face. No, at the minute you have got spare ribs written all over your face. <laughs> now do you love me? Do you know, give it up, right? You're great company. But? But it's never gonna happen. It never does. You know what happens? You're growing up, you're not handsome, you're not tall, and you think, I know, I'll make them laugh. And what's the result? You make them laugh. That's all you ever do. Sorry. I'll bet Alan makes you laugh. Yeah. Well, not that much. No trouble in paradise? Mm, but it's lovely though, I mean, he makes me feel safe. Safe? If you want safe, you should get a god dog. Yeah, I think that is what I've done. Now I made you miserable. So much for the funny man. Listen, I had a great night. Thanks for the dinner. You're a wonderful lady. You don't want to waste your time with a guy like me. I'm sure you and your friend, you must have other plans. Mm, don't worry about her. She went off with that Stefano Delaney bloke somewhere. She did what? That's why we raided the party. We're trying to nail Stefano Delaney. Us and police departments in 12 other states. You name it, he's done it. 
Well, right now, we've got information. He's moving into a counterfeit design scam. He meets top people in the fashion world, steals their ideas, then sends them out to sweatshops in the Far East where they make up copies and sell them out in the black market for half the price. His top names in the industry going bust because of him. Right now, we have reason to believe he's concentrating on underwear and lingerie. You mean he rips off knickers? Well, and then mother met father number three in Ibiza at a resort. He was a very peculiar man. Yeah, yeah you know, Maxwell. Maxwell, it's been a real great pleasure doing business with you, huh? And listen, don't you worry about that little lady of yours, huh? I mean, with money like yours, who could resist you? <laughs> Come on. Even she said that. Hey, hey. Hmm? Don't forget this. Oh, this is all that I have left. But it's no good. Even my bras seem empty. Hey, listen, you take it very easy, Maxwell, huh? All right, bye-bye. What's all that about bras? Do you use his bras in your movies? Uh, yeah, but only in the first reel. Ed, call the boys. It's time for another celebration. We've had a very good day's work. And uh, organize some champagne. Yes, sir. The good stuff. Mm. Suits me. Typical. If a man is bad news, Maxine's bound to find him. You don't understand. Jeez, the British in crime. People who get involved with Stefano Delaney and get on the wrong side of him have a way of disappearing. Permanently. What? Oh my god. Well, well, where is he? Where are they now? Right on top of us. Penthouse suite. Okay, so I'm supposed to be on a stakeout, but... Hey, dinner with a beautiful lady for the first time in my life, and, and the spare ribs here, they to die for. Um, why can't you raid him again? We don't have any concrete evidence. And Stefano's planning on leaving the country at midnight tonight. Right, then it's up to me. I've got to get Maxine out of there. Fiona, wait. Here, take this. First sign of trouble, you call me. The phone number's on the card. Now, I'm going to go back to the precinct and tell them what's happened. Right, thanks. Perfect cop's wife. Won't you come in? Just one little drink. Make sure you jack. Cool. Satisfying. Wet. Well, we've had a good day of it, haven't you, you see? But, but it's her, you see. She, she'll be looking for me. I'll just leave the door open. You're always welcome, Jack. Door's open for you, Jack. All you need to do is push. Oh, come on now, Chandler. Be fair. Think of Hera. Right, that's done it. Don't tell me. Sunburn. I'm just as bad. I hope you don't mind me saying, but you've been in business. If you could just, you know, put a thin strap of felt, you know, under the strap, it wouldn't have help in the seats. Uh, perhaps a thin strip of foam with low viscosity and a porous skin. Huh? Oh, Vera. Vera, you're the only woman who speaks my language. Uh. You seem a little nervous, Jack. I mean, I'm hardly a stranger, am I? I spent plenty of time with strange women, love. One more won't make any difference. <laughs> oh. oh! Oh, I'm so sorry. Oh, I'm so clumsy tonight. <laughs> oh, I must be intoxicated. <laughs> 
Oh, look! There's a stain. Oh, well, you'll just have to slip that off. No, don't worry about the shirt, love. I got it out of Emily Bishop's Christmas collection for the home. Oh, no, go on. Just slip it off. You don't need it in the heat. Do you feel the heat, Jack? I've got this tiny bead of perspiration running down the middle of my back. I am working up a bit of a sweat myself, huh? Oh, the heat is so intense. It won't stop. It can't escape. Oh, I'm getting hotter. And hotter and hotter and hotter. I, I, I think I'll, I'll go and get this equipment. I can't think you'd be short of women in your job. I mean, all day long, it must be wall to wall. Oh, that's just it, Vera. Everyone thinks that. My whole life has been a fascination with the beauty of... But it's just research. I'm locked in the laboratory all day long. We use computer models, not even actual... Even with the finished bras, it's a plaster dummy. I don't get near the real thing. Not ever. My whole life. You mean you... You've never... I've never even actually seen. Hey, well, don't be looking at me. Oh, Vera, you understand me. All I want is a wife to take care of me. Someone to come home to at night. Someone to sit with and, and watch the prices right. Two cups of hot cocoa at midnight. Just company. Nice little home. Size of Scotland. You'd like that, wouldn't you? Imagine me a millionaire's wife. <laughs> no more work, proper clothes, shopping like you see these women that shop all day long, don't they? Good food. You know, not having to traipse around three different supermarkets looking for, you know, cut price. I mean, it'd be a different world. Be different, man. That's what I can offer you, Vera. What's the matter? By the act, the temperature's shooting up. Come and sit down here. Right, well, well, just for a minute, but I better get back because our Vera will be looking for me. Oh, Jack, Vera's gone, baby. She's in the past. She was stupid enough to throw it all away. I mean, a woman like that. <laughs> she doesn't deserve the things that you've got. What would that be, then? Charm, good looks, a five-star tavern, a racehorse, and a massive inheritance. You know, little things like that. Look, 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 Biddy, love, the, the truth is, and I cannot believe I am saying this, so. Don't get me wrong, but you're a fine-looking woman. <laughs> but the fact is, none of that is true. You're a lovely man, Maxwell. I mean, don't get me wrong. I must be mad, but I can't. You suppose Jack can offer you the same as me? No, no, I can't. I told the odd fib about having a tavern, you know. It's not a tavern, really. It's a back street pub in the middle of nowhere. It's a tuppence same in a little place. Even the brewery didn't want it. They couldn't wait to sell it. Happy for anybody to take it off their hands. Even two idiots like Jack and Vera Dorth. And that were posh for us. I mean, up till then, we'd had nothing but scrimping and saving. And it's no different now. I mean, there's no profit, you know, having rovers. It's just hard work all day, every day. There's no end in sight. But you know what? It's all we ever wanted. Our own little palace. And my grandson, he was born in the back room. <laughs> Might not sound old to you, but I love it. I'm happy there. That's me and our Vera. Till the day we die. I love him, the big, great, fat ape. But I do. I'm sorry, Maxwell, but I can't. 
That's the most beautiful thing I've ever heard. She's my life. I'm sorry, Biddy. I can't. So you're not rich? Listen, I might have thrown it all away, but you've still got a chance. Chance at what? Marriage with Biddy. Look, I'm not watching somebody else muck it up. You're going to go straight up to that room and tell your lover. Right this minute. Come on. Hi, um, I'm a guest of Stefano's. I was at a party last night. It's a chain of salons throughout the northwest of England. I chose not to concentrate in London. It's very common these days, full of amateurs. Max, not now. Of course, I handle them all. Clients travel the length and breadth of Europe. Not mentioning any names, but let's just say E R. And I don't mean the one with George Clooney. <laughs> Max, it's important. Not now, please. Sorry, it's my assistant. I gave her the job out of sympathy. Now, just watch your tone, young lady. I'd hate to sack you. Biddy love, any other time would be a pleasure. I mean, if you're ever passing Weatherfield, Preferably on a Tuesday night, because Tuesday night is our Vera's bingo night. Could you just get out of here? I got a husband to find and a tax bill due at the end of the month. Cooey, Biddy, are you in there? Vera. Oh, well, that'll teach you for leading me on. Guess who I've got with me? Oh, Biddy, I'm so sorry. Take me back, please. Maxwell, hide. Where? I don't care anywhere. I got a millionaire standing outside my door. I'm so sorry, honey. <sighs> Open the door! I'm coming, sweetheart! What are you gonna do? Don't worry, love. I've done this before. Oh, Biddy! Maxwell! Hey, you oh. tell her, Maxwell, what you told me, aren't we all? I-I-I love you, Biddy. Oh, and I love you too, Maxwell. A million times over. I'm filling up. Do you know, all the years I've been with Jack, I, I don't think I can remember him ever saying he loved me. You know, even Dave proposed, I don't think he said he, he loved me. Maybe he doesn't. Anyway, good luck, you two. No, 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 don't, don't go, Vera, not after all you've done for us. No, I've got to start, well, getting used to being on my own now. That woman? is a genuine saint. That's certainly true. I've never heard of a saint with money. Okay, baby Max, let's hit the town. Let's move and groove, it's early. No, Biddy, the moment is nigh. What moment? We have spent four nights here together and I am tired of sleeping in the tub. After years of design and development, I'm ready for practical work. You mean? I mean, yep. It's time for hands-on research. And I mean, now. Oh, Maxwell! Oh, Biddy! Oh, blimey. Max, I am telling you, it's trouble. It's international theft. Like, what he's doing is stealing these designs of underwear and laundry and that, and then he's making copies, taking all the profits for himself. What, you mean he rips off knickers? Exactly. Wait a minute, Fee. Look at this. I swear to God, Stefano, that one over there. A little lady friend, she was having dinner with Dino de Catalano. Dino de Catalano, remind me. Short, fat little cop, always eating. They're in this together, they're gonna set you up. All right, let's go. That's it, they're making copies. I've got them on tape. Evidence, Maxing, that is brilliant. Oh, I'm clever now, is that it? You sure are. Right, come on, I think it's time to make a bit of a discreet exit. Ladies, not leaving, surely the party's just beginning. You can give me that. Thank you, let's all take a look at this. It's showtime. Who's that? Oh, 
Oh no! Oh my god, it's mother! She said she'd return to haunt me if I did the deed out of wedlock! A celebration! Come on in, right over there. Put it right in front of the closet. Directly in front of the closet. Hey, that's great. I'm gonna, can I borrow you for a second, hon? Come here. Maxwell, sweetie. What? Now, I want to show you something. I was wondering, both of you. Uh -huh. Now, all that land out there. Now, what exactly is that land? The desert. Oh, and what desert would that be? The Mojave Desert. You know that, darling. That's the Mojave Desert. And that bit over there? And that's still the Mojave Desert. <laughs> oh! Earthquake, Maxie! Oh, I told you the Earth would move. <laughs> okay, you can go now. I, I think he wants a tip. Leave women alone. Now blow. <laughs> Look, we are not police. Honest, it is nothing to do with us. We're, we're just two hairdressers from Weatherfield, that's it. Two completely innocent hairdressers, is that right? Who just happened to capture my entire enterprise on tape. Oh, look! There's me with Maxwell Baxter. And look, here are the designs being copied. Well, well, well. Very clever little hairdressers. And what kind of clever little hairdressing tricks can we come up with next, huh? Cut and dye. That's my specialty. With a permanent wave goodbye. Wait there, I'll take it through. Breaks my heart, ladies. Two beautiful girls. Then I think to myself, you know, the world's full of beautiful girls. Two goes missing, who's to know? We've got friends, right? And they are right outside now. Yeah, like who? Vidal Sassoon. Hey, champagne, sir. Excellent. Ladies, you can join me. A final toast. Yeah, then your toast. <laughs> Ed, you should listen to this. I'm in very good form. Ah, it's the lovely ladies. They always let you down. And when Stefano Delaney gets let down, he gets very, very upset. Ed, you remember Helen Constantino? Ah, uh, giving her anything. In fact, you see that hotel there? I devoted that entire hotel to Helen Constantino. In fact, I built it on top of her. She was in your line of work. She was a beautician. And now she's wearing an awful lot of foundation. What the hell's going on? Okay. Time to say goodbye, ladies. A Las Vegas. God, this is good. I should be writing this down. Do you got any final requests? If you like, I could leave your hearts in San Francisco. No, that's enough. Big Ed here handles all my dirty work. I don't do it anymore. So I'll just... Hey, where's the tape? Time to go. After you. Where's the tape? Huh? Max! Hey, 
call yo, her back yo, up. Yo, Let's get out of here. We'll bring her with us. Me! Me! Oh, me! Hey, look all that noise. Me! I can't concentrate. Me! My designs? Hey, what are you doing with my autumn uplifter? But they're stealing my designs! Yes, so. They're stealing my fortune! Ah, let me in! Oh! No longer I'm gonna stay hidden. You know what? I'm gonna sue. Oh. I'm gonna take you and you and you to court for defamation of character. <laughs> I'm gonna come out of this richer than I already am. <laughs> hey, 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 what, what? Get out of here. Gotta come out now. <gasps> Jack! The tape! See ya.
One little kiss. After all this, just one little kiss. All right then. Mm, she loves me. You saved my fortune, Jack. Oh, honey, I can't tell you how happy that makes me feel. Ah, well, you see, it's all to do with the speed. You see, it's how I started on, 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 the, on the fun fair. It's to do with velocity and angle of acceleration. Uh, but, but how did you get in that trolley? Ah, uh, It's a British thing. Theodore, where are you going? I've been looking for you all day. Pull the other one. You don't want to see him anymore. That's what you said. I didn't say that. When did I say that? Beats me. Honey. Go on, Las Vegas hero. You haven't got a civil word to say in your own house. Oh, don't be like this, V. Look, leave me alone. Peter, will you listen to me for once in your life? Look, don't shame me, Jack. You've done enough already. Peter Duckworth! Do you know the things you've got to do for a quiet life? I love, I love you. You. You are. You heard. Say it again. I love, I love you, Vera. Oh, oh, come here. Big soft girl. <laughs> oh, yeah. What is it with this town? You give a girl a cuddle and you all start clapping. <laughs> I miss his bitty Baxter. <laughs> we are gathered here together at the Little White Wedding Chapel in Las Vegas, Nevada, to join together in marriage, Jack and Vera. Be there anyone here that objects to this marriage? Let them now speak, or forever. Hold their peace. Don't you dare. Jack and Vera, this is a very special moment in your life. It is a moment that you will always cherish all the days of your life. Your loved ones and your friends are gathered here to celebrate this very special occasion. And I do know that you, Jack and Vera, have spent a lot of beautiful moments together. And while you have, there has been Three words that you have said to each other that are very special. What might those words be? Not now, Vera. I call upon these people here present to witness that I... John Harold Doworth take you, Veronica Burton... ...to be my lawful wedded husband. I promise to love, honour and respect you from this day forward. For better, for worse, in joy and, and sorrow. And in sickness and in health. For, for as long, long as we both, both shall live. Mm. By the power vested in me by the state of Nevada, you are legally married husband and wife. You may kiss the bride. Hey, yeah. You're all mine now, you big buddy. No, there's no need for all that, V. Right, come on, Vera, I'll watch the door. There you go, watch that door. We won't forget this, I promise you. The design that you came up with, that little strip of felt and the honeycomb decolette, well, we're going to name it after you. We're going to call it the Vera. Ah, did you hear that, Jack? I'm going to be on sailor in shops. <laughs> I came to Las Vegas, a lonely millionaire. And now he's leaving with his millionaire wife. Aww. And it's all thanks to you. Don't mention it. Hey, well, if you're ever passing, pop in, Rovers Return, Weatherfield. <laughs> And we've got a brown patch down the road, you know, Mike Baldwin. I am aware of his work. We'll come and try the whole pole. Will it be on the house? <gasps> Vera, the day we get millionaires inside the rovers, we're making them pay. <laughs> 
Oh, uh, well, we're gonna have to say goodbye. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> oh. Bye. Oh, oh, bye. Um, bye. Come here, you ain't. Oh. 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 The ribs are gone. Oh. Hey. You know. hey. That could have been me, though. Aye, that could have been me. Yeah, well, we'll make do away. We will, that love, I. We will, that. Yeah. Oh, Maxwell, sweetheart, my little legs, they are so worn out. Would you go and get the car? I'll wait right here. Oh, any, anything for you, darling. Mm. Mm. I left it up on the rooftop, the far side near the edge. Certainly, my pumpkin. Oh, Maxwell! Yes, darling. Bye bye. Bye bye. I couldn't believe a word of this at home, you know. I'm not sure I do when I was here. <laughs> hey, I can't afford back home uh, being told I'm a newlywed. Russell, no, I've been living in sin all these years. No, it'll be our little secret. We won't say a word about it. We won't say a word, not ever. No. It's fine by me. And me. Yeah, 40 years married, that's what I'll tell them. Because that's what it's been, hasn't it? I, I, uh, I mean, what's a piece of paper? <laughs> I'm not going to say anything to Alan because he'd be that jealous. Me following the plans of an international knicker thief. I'd never hear end of it, would I? <laughs> yeah, let's just say we've had a quiet weekend in, really. Nice middle-aged holiday. Yeah, agreed. Ah, taxi! Mrs. Duckworth. Hey, I'll say that again. Mrs. Duckworth. Say you love me. Don't push your luck, me. Oh, this is the life fee. First class. <laughs> Upgraded by Las Vegas Police Force. Yeah. Do you know, I, I feel like a film star. What time is it, V? Hey, you nearly had me there. It's gone three. <laughs> you can't beat British beer, you know. Just smell them Kentish hops. Yeah. Oh! Oh, you're having a kip. Good girl. Don't worry, darling. It washes out. I should know. 